Alrighty, we're back and we've got a four on four draft for you today. Love it. Four on four cube drafts. Chef's kiss. We've got Alpha Frog, myself, Luis Salvado, and Juju Bean. Oh, what a team. Good luck, opponents. We're playing against Echo Bronin, Andreas Peterson, good friend of mine and a VSL alumni. Dan the Man, Pete Ingram, former Play Design member, and Zur89, avid drafter here. I'm going to say that uh, our, team, our team is looking good. This pack's also pretty strong. We're using Alpha Frog's cube, which he's tuning for, oh, I, I hear perhaps another uh, another run on Magic Online. We'll see, we'll see. And I'm gonna first pick Strip Mine. I love first picking Strip Mine. Getting to take Strip Mine when no one else knows about it means you might get fifth pick Crucible, you might get a late Red and Six. There's so many ways to draft around it. Crucible, Red and Six, Ramanop are like the main ways. Loam is a backup as well. I am passing Comet and Caracas and Fractured Identity. But, and currency converter, I know a lot of people like that. But uh, that's fine. I'll take strip mine and I'll pass two good white adjacent cards in a row. It's fine. Basically, I expect Dan to either take Comet or Fracture Identity with Crocs also in the pack. Salvato take another one. So it's like a little awkward, but Salvato can navigate from there. Oh, channel. Pretty into taking channel here. Strip mine mostly wants you to go into green when you take it early, just because a lot of the ways to utilize it, like Ramanop and Renin Six, are green, and then ways to find it, like crop rotation and Elvish recruitment, are green. So, I like, I like looking at strip mine when you take it early as like a green adjacent card, and then channel, of course, is very strong. Memory Memory Lapse is another cool addition. Counter a spell and put it on top of its owner's library. Very strong card. I think it's on par with other two mana counters. I'm kind of surprised it never shows up in Vintage Cube. So if I didn't take Channel, I guess I would take Sheldock, which is also a really messed up card. I think Sheldock's better than Memory Lapse. My only concern with taking Channel is that Andreas knew I, he, he's passing me Channel. So it's possible he cuts off uh, Channel stuff, but Channel is very strong, so I think I'm still going to take it. All right, this pack has Chrome Host Seed Shark, which I do like, Escape to the Wilds, and Omnath. Snuff out. So a bunch of cards. Nothing that goes super cleanly with what I have. Like Omnath's green, but is a lot of other colors. Though it is good in this style of deck. I think I might just take Seed Shark, though. I really like Seed Shark. It's actually good in a lot of decks that Channel's good in, which is a lot of the colorless cards. Those kind of decks tend to be able to use Seed Shark fairly well, and I don't think I'm giving up too much by taking it here. So this pack has Mightstone and Weakstone, Kinan, which maybe if we pick up Basalt Monolith or what have you, it can be good. Not really interested in Resto, Chandra, Teferi. There's Eternal Witness, which is also solid. Channel, Mightstone, and Weakstone isn't fantastic. It's okay. But Mightstone and Weakstone is nice in the Chrome Host decks. Maybe I will just take this. And I just don't see a lot of those other cards as being super high value. Oh, there's Zerda. So Zerda also works nicely with Basalt Monolith or Grim Monolith. There's Waterlog Grove, which is if I end up blue-green, it's a blue-green duel that also works with the land replaying abilities. There's also a Gristlebrand in the pack, but I don't feel like I'm in a position to really take that. I think I'm going to take Waterlog Grove here. And who knows, maybe we'll end up channeling, maybe not. We'll have to kind of see how this plays out. At this point, I, based on the how the net last couple packs went, I kind of wish I had just taken Sheldock Isle. I don't know, maybe Andreas was trapping me. But I can also just ditch the channel if I need to. Okay, there's Crop Rotation, Thirst for Discovery, a blue-green-white land. Icar Wellspring, this is a cool one with like any artifact sacrifice abilities. But uh, I think I might just take Crop Rotation here. Look, if you're going to move in on Strip Mine, move in on Strip Mine. And Crop Rotation means that any sort of uh, land replayability card is going to get a lot better. Micaeus the Lunark is mostly here for combos with... Uh, Agatha's Cauldron, which is pretty cool. There's Triskelion and Hangerback. These are both interesting artifacts. Finale is good with Channel, but I, I kind of feel like I might want to just Triskelion here. Triskelion, it, I could end up in a Mishra's Workshop deck too, and Triskelion's really good there. Eh, maybe not. Triskelion is a little bit on the weaker side in terms of a card. There's also Hangerback, which is a fine two drop. I don't really want to channel out a a hanger back. Honestly, channeling out either of those is a little weak. Let's take the hanger back, though. I haven't drafted an artifact deck in a while, and it feels like the pieces are kind of here for that. We'll have to see. 
we'll have to see where, where things end up. I guess, I don't know, Finale is just okay. Ooh, there's City of Traders. I do like that one. Don't mind passing Scavenging Ooze. Bonfire is also decent, but Channel Bonfire is not really a combo. All right, let's just take City of Traders, pass a Bob, a Bonfire, a Spell Queller, a Scavenging Ooze. And that was pick eight, so not the most exciting line, though. Oh, Mirror Battlesphere is not terrible to channel out and good at the artifact theme. There's also Holebreaker Horror, Lee of Old, Revel Arc, but we are balling out of control. A little battle ball here. Obviously, Tolarian Academy is like one of the cards I'm really looking for here, though Gaia's Cradle would also be of interest. I could easily move away from channel here, though it's actually looking like it's going to work out fine. I have a blue-green duel. I have a crop rotation that I'm pretty interested in playing. Obviously, I need a little more to make it work. And I have a bunch of colorless cards. All right, well, let's take Terra Sunder. I found this card to be pretty solid. Passing four white cards and a Gaunti. That's fine with me. And... Misha's Workshop would be a high pick here. Obviously, Academy would be a high pick here. Crucible, Ramanop would be, be interesting. Fast Bond, Exploration would be a value. And it's possible that this could be an opposition deck too. Oh, I like Haywire Might. I like it more than Moss or Dread Knight. We don't really look... It doesn't look like we've moved towards Omnath Escape Colors so much. I would rather... keep keep the amount of colors I'm playing as low as possible. When I'm playing these artifact heavy decks, I kind of, I don't want to spend a ton of picks on mana fixing. And if I took Omnath or Escape, I think that would push me more in that direction. Obviously I might end up having to do that anyway, but I think minimizing it to where, yeah, you're interested in blue green duels, but not a whole lot else, I think is a good place to be for that. And Mosswood Dread Knight has been surprisingly solid. It's not, a card I want to take early. I mean, having around four to six cards left in the pack is actually about where I like to take it. But when you're black green, I've actually found the card to be totally serviceable. Just a nice little resilient card draw slash threat split card here. All right, I'm feeling pretty good about the channel versus shell dock pick the, where we're at. Oh, I'll take Kinnon here. This is a great speculative Kinnon pick passing now a black white card and a black card. So feels like I've passed in a lot of black and white. Haven't gotten past a single red card, so it feels like uh, Andreas has a good chance of being red, but I haven't seen a lot of blue either, so it could easily be both those colors. There has been some green. I'm not convinced I'm getting cut on green yet. Oh, okay, so do I want Odawara as a value land, Indotha Triome as a white-green-black duel, or a red-black talisman? I think I'll take the white-green-black duel, because I have Terra Sunder already. I, there, there could be other cards I want to splash for. I also passed a bunch of white, green, and black cards, mostly white and black, so I don't really want to pass a black-white duel. Also, this talisman is right now double off color, which that's a bridge too far for me. I do like Odawara in general, but I like taking uh, fixing in this spot. All right, we get two more cards here. Oh, wow. Super late Trinket Mage. I'll take it. I only have Hangerback and Haywire Might to get, but... I have hope that I'll that I'll open something good. I feel like my first picks in the last couple drafts haven't been amazing. <laughs> now Dream Halls is last. All right. Well, you know what? I'm not zero percent to play Dream Halls. Oh, there's Mox Sapphire. Oh, and Delarian Academy. Uh, I gotta take Mox. It, look, it sucks because Academy's just no chance. Ha it has no chance of wheeling. I would have loved to have it be one pick to the right, you know. So maybe Dan has to pass it to me, but. Academy and Mox are pretty close in my deck. I think Mox still might be better, and it's not close. I'm not passing Andreas on Mox when Academy probably does nothing for him. So is there a chance it wheels? No. Like, this pack's not even strong enough. Like, there's him, Arid Mesa, Chandra, Firebolt maybe, and it runs out pretty fast after that. So, all right. I guess we know we're not getting Academy. And that's fine. Keep that in mind. See if we can at least get some uh, crucible type stuff. Okay, so here there's Lion's Eye and Echo of Eons. Do love me a Lion's Eye Diamond. I also like Echo of Eons. There's Arkham's Astrolabe, which is a pretty good card. Unfortunately, you can't get it with. Oh no, you can't get it with Trinket Mage. You can't get it with uh, Urza Saga. I'm probably gonna take Arkham's Astrolabe. I found this card to be really strong. I like Echo with Lion's Eye, but I kind of feel like if I take Lion's Eye, I'm not wheeling Echo and vice versa. And the fact that I know I'm not getting Academy means that going that direction seems a little less satisfying. 
are a little less strong. Whereas I found Arkham's Astrolabe to just be a, a very, very good card. It just fixes your mana and puts an artifact into play at pretty low cost. It also works with Kinnon. You tap this, it, it actually taps for two mana with Kinnon in play, which is pretty good. It's like plus one mana. Okay. Brutal about how the Academy turned out, but still have pretty good outs to get either Mishra's Workshop or Urza, potentially, or ways to replay lands from my graveyard, which I have the Strip Mine. I'm the one who's supposed to be most interested in those. And then there's this pack, which really doesn't have anything I want. Wow. What a beat. Um... Yeah, I mean, we don't really have any instants for gear. Oh, look, we have Terra Sunder and Crop Rotation, so this isn't very good. We're not playing black. We're not playing red. There's Questing Beast, which isn't really what this kind of deck really wants all that much anyways. There's Tundra, in case I want to splash white. There's Wall of Roots, which is also pretty bad. Doesn't even work with Kinnon. That's just a weak pack. I'll just take a Tundra. Who knows? Oh, there's Basalt Monolith. Okay, so that's infinite mana. With Kinnon, we, we know we're not getting Zerta, but now that we have, I'm going to take the Basalt Monolith, and now that we have Basalt Monolith and Kinnon and Channel, any big colorless card is, is really of, of great interest. Also, there's a Mox and a Talisman, but I don't really feel very confident that either of those will wheel. There is that Dream Halls, which has possibilities, but I don't think it's going to be good here. N knowing you're not going to get Academy is unfortunate, <laughs> I will say that. Uh... What are we looking for? In terms of colorless, we have Mirror, Battle Sphere. I would be nice to pick up some draw sevens. Those work nicely. I mean, I know I passed up on Echo of Eons, but I think that was for good reason here. And what else are we trying to pick up? That If the Walking Ballista wheels, I'll be pretty happy. That's a great win condition. If I knew I was getting Basalt Monolith, I think I would have taken it over Arkham's Astrolabe, but I have been really impressed with the Astrolabe. Okay, so there's Upheaval and Blightsteel and Primetime, also Sylvan. Yeah, there's a bunch of good cards here. I'm going to take Upheaval. Upheaval is good with Mox already, though obviously you need a little bit more than that. But inf if you get infinite colorless mana and you can cast Upheaval and do a bunch of stuff, that's great. I don't have Tinker, so I don't really want to get infinite mana and play Blightsteel. That's pretty weak. Let's just take... Upheaval, and then if any of those green cards wheel, I would be uh, inclined to, to to take one. Also, channel upheaval is a combo. You go like channel, float a bunch of colored mana off your lands, pay a bunch of life, upheaval, and then replay a thing or two. And that can kind of get there. Well, let's see. So that was pick five. So we have a couple more picks here. Sail into the West would be a nice pickup if we could find one. Reckoner, Bankbuster, Lorien Revealed, Rafine's Tower. Well, I'm not taking Rafine's Tower or Maelstrom Pulse. So it's really Bankbuster versus Lorien Revealed. Mm, kind of inclined for Lorien Revealed. It's a blue-white land right now. At some point it might be blue-green because I'll be trying to pick up a blue-green uh, duel. And... It's also a good thing to spend mana on if you have a bunch of extra mana. So I think Lorien Revealed is fine. If I had the Academy, I would just take the Bank Buster, but you know, we're not we're not living in that world anymore, unfortunately. Bank Buster is kind of nice as a way to spend Mightstone and Weakstone mana, I guess. <laughs> and can I have a couple things that work with that? I could also have taken Elvish Mystic, but I don't really like elves in these decks very much. Unless they tap for blue mana, then I'm a little more interested. Though I am going to have a decent amount of early green because of channel. Could still use an Eldrazi. I feel like picking up an Emrakul seems like it could be realistic. I'm the one with the channel after all. Would be nice to find uh, Crucible. Crucible would be one I'm interested in. And this has High Tide. It's not quite the same thing. There's V-Click. Rolling Earthquake is technically a Mana Sink. <laughs> I'm probably going to take the V-Click. V-Click's just a decent card. It's nothing too exciting, but in a heavy blue deck that is yeah, trying to set up these things, it's it's a fine way to clear the path for counter magic. This deck could also go like Seed Shark, V-Click, and just kind of attack them. That, that doesn't seem completely unreasonable here. Oh, I like Exploration. I like Retrofitter. I like Oracle of Moldiah. Retrofitter being a way to sink infinite mana is pretty nice. 
like Retrofitter into Kinnan into Infinite Mana is awesome. There's Wasteland too, and if I take Wasteland, wow, this pack has a lot of action. I kind of wish this was a little more spread out. If I take Wasteland, I, I'd have both the Wasteland and Strip Mine and Crop Rotation, and then no one else would also want Ramanop or Crucible. All right, I'll take that because I knew Academy wasn't coming back. Uh, oh, Dryad is also nice. That lets you play additional land every turn. All right, and it taps, makes all your lands tap for every color. Could see doing something with that. Oh, Echo Wield. All right, I will take Echo now over Corsair, Crufix, and Rexage, and Dothy Voidwalker. I guess I'll take Questing Beast. I don't really think missing out on Wall of Roots is that big of a deal. Oh, Life from the Loam. All right. I didn't really even think about it last time because it was in a pack that had stuff I didn't want to pass up, but Loam works. And I guess I'll take Blightsteel in case I get Tinker, though. Actually, Restless Cottage is pretty nice. It helps me cast Terra Sunder and it's like a win condition. All right. Let's do that. Okay. I, I like where we're at now. I mean... Ooh, High Tide plus Dryad. All your lands are islands. Uh, this this is turning into a, a Strip Mine Wasteland deck, but I'm pretty glad I took the Wasteland that, given that I picked up the Loam there. And I've got big mana stuff with Channel and uh, Kinan here. It would have been nice to pick up that Ballista, I guess. The Astrolabe, you know, worked. it would have worked out better to take Ballista in that particular instance, but... I think where we ended up still is pretty good. All right, now we just need to open a soul ring and then and then we're set. <laughs> what do we got? Uh, there's the crucible. Ooh, also a coveted jewel. When it enters the battlefield, draw three cards. Costs six mana. Taps three mana of any color. But whenever an opponent hits you with a creature, they take the jewel and draw three cards and untap it. It's nice. I'm kind of interested in the coveted jewel and wheel the crucible. Like no, no one's gonna take my crucible, right? Coveted Jewel is a great way to use channel and a great way to get paid off for Kinan because you go, Kinan, generate a bunch of mana with Basalt Monolith, play Coveted Jewel, draw three, and have four mana of any color now. That should help you win the game. I really want to take this card. All right. My, my heart's breaking that I don't have that academy, but I could get a Mishra's Workshop. That actually sounds completely legit here. Uh, I like Elvish Reclaimer, but I, I also think I'll wield that. And I think I like Remand over Days or Venser here in terms of uh, interaction. So just go with Remand. Oh, there's the Workshop slamming it. Checking the rest and slamming it. And hopefully wheeling Titania. But even if I don't, Workshop to help cast Basalt Monolith, Mightstone, Weakstone, Coveted Jewel, Battle Ball, like even Hangerback. Yeah, Workshop looks awesome here. I could use a few more Artifact Idiots, but I'm sure I'll pick those up. And I really like how this deck's looking. We're, we're excited. All right, let's get Pulse, High Tide, and Dream Halls out of here. Right now, this is 18 land plus a Mox and a Lorien revealed, so it's good. I have a few more slots here. I also don't have to play Terra Sunder or Questing Beast. So we'll, we'll see what we get. All right. Oh, man, this pack has Seasoned Engineer, Swords to Plowshares, Prismatic Vista, and Atali, and Time Warp, and Talisman, and Bobble. Uh... How, how good am I at casting Swords to Plowshares or Seasoned Engineer? Pretty bad, right? I've got, well, I've got a Blue-White Land and a Lorien Revealed. And an Indotha Triumph and an Astrolabe. Oh, maybe not be that bad. So which one's better? Well, the good thing is, it kind of feels like... Oh, wait, this is pack three. No, I, I passed Dan a decent amount of white. Dan's going to get one of those, so it's not like hate drafting is all that good. Um... I mean, Seasoned Dungeoneer is a pretty messed up card. And Swords to Plowshares is also good. I don't know. I'm just going to take Prismatic Vista. I don't... Prismatic Vista with Crucible and uh, Life Alum is very strong. And it fixes my colors. Past two good white cards, like whatever. And we'll see what, where, where the rest of the pack goes here. On Thin Ice, another Snow Thing. Beseju. Torsten is a big thing, but and Magma Opus. Let's just take Poseidon as a as another good card to pair with our land effects. I also think we're gonna we're gonna have enough playables almost for sure. So taking lands, especially lands that do things, is a bonus. Oh, there's a Gaia's Cradle. So I didn't take the Retrofitter, but Cradle could actually be kind of dope here with Battlesphere. 
with Seed Shark tokens, Hangerback tokens. And I'm not really giving up much. I'm giving up a regrowth and Oath of Druids that I don't really want to play. All right, let's take Cradle. Plus, uh, Dryad means that you can also tap any land for mana, which is nice. Mindslaver is a way to sink a ton of mana into something, and it's a good card to cast off of uh, Workshop. I don't really mind losing out on Jetmere's Garden. Worm Coil is also reasonable, but I think Worm Coil is a lot less powerful than Mindslaver. So let's just go Mindslaver. And we're still at like 19 lands here, right? Because 6, 17, 18, 19. Which I don't mind. This deck's probably going to play 18 or 19 lands, depending. Because Strip and Waste and Waterlog Grove all count kind of as spells. Besaju also. But I could also easily cut Terra Sunder. Do I want to play one Swamp to enable Restless Cottage? I guess I don't know. I also have Maelstrom Pulse if I really wanted it. Show and tell, Candelabra, Dark Depths. Uh, no stage. This is pick eight. Sad. Sad, you know, pray, you know, mourning for the Academy that never was. Uh, I guess I'm really not going to play either Candelabra or Dark Depths in this deck. Dark Depths technically is an infinite mana sink, but it's not a very good one. Candelabra would really only be good with a Cradle. <laughs> I guess Mishra's Workshop. Oh, and City of Traders. Uh, I also have High Tide Dryad. All right, let's 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 take the Candelabra. Let's see if we can cook. All right, Crucible came back. So did Pentad Prism, which I'm surprised by, but obviously I have to take Crucible. Then I take Reclaimer, because we're going to go pretty hard on this Crucible plan. Oh, and then a Red-White Talisman. Yeah, I don't really care about the rest anyway, so I'll take the Talisman. I don't know how likely I'm to play it. Let's take Questing Beast out. Let's, for now, take Terra Sunder and the black green restless cottage out probe talisman time warp oh black green talisman interesting probe is nice with like chrome host seed shark time warp is nice when you add a ton of mana i think this could be a time warp deck and i guess man no i'll just take vindicate i'm not going to play the mana morphos i'll hate the looting don't care about the swift reconfig i'll take click out and so this is now 15 land 16 17 but th that is playing the candelabra which i don't know may maybe can i justify candelabra is kind of the question here i'm going to save this as coveted strip mines all right let's see Import. Let's see what what this looks like. Yeah, my guess is I, I can't really justify Candelabra. I will have to go get a coveted jewel, though. So can I justify Gaia's Cradle? I think I can. I think I have enough ways to use it. Channel's looking pretty good in this deck. Haywire might. Yeah, I mean, Candelabra... I will say Candelabra plus Workshop when I have 6-drop, six 6-drop, six 7-drop, 5-drop isn't crazy. And I have like a bunch of ways to find the Workshop. And then if Cradle's being good, I could also Candelabra Cradle. But that brings me to the question. This is 17 lands right now. Well, 15 lands plus Mox Sapphire Lorien revealed. And I think I'd want to go a little more. I really wish I could have taken the... Walking Ballista over Astrolabe, because I also ended up with... I mean, I guess these two are Snowlands, but the rest of these aren't really Snowlands, though I guess I'm not really playing Indotha Trium anymore either. Oh, and I guess I don't need to play Tundra. I don't have any reason for white mana, so I'd rather play Snow, Snow Basics. Okay, so... Cradle... Paseju, Waterlog Grove, I mean... Two, three, four. Two, three, four. So this is four, five. Oh, Lorian Reveal doesn't get green. That's that's a shame. So let's see. Let's put the blue over here. So green has five, six green sources, seven green sources now, not counting Cradle. And then plus Astrolabe. And then this is a red-white talisman. That also might be quite cuttable here, by the way. And then 
Blue has four, five, six, seven, eight blue sources. Yeah. I mean, that all doesn't sound crazy to me. And then I put a, the talisman in there. There's Restless Cottage that I'm not playing. I also could play High Tide. It would basically work with Candelabra or with uh, Dryad. Dryad, all your lands are islands, so you cast High Tide, then you tap all your lands. I don't have any ways to untap besides the Candelabra, but I do have a lot of ways to spend tons of mana, which I think I want all these ways. Echo of Eons with no ways to discard it is a bit of a bummer, but I can dredge it with Loam, which isn't nothing. And this is effectively playing 18 lands. I could also potentially cut City of Traders, but that is another Candelabra thing. Maybe the Cradle is just terrible. Like, if I don't Chrome Host Seed Shark or Mere Battlesphere, I'm not getting that many creatures into play. Six, seven green sources, eight green sources. It's not terrible, but maybe, maybe the Cradle... Like, if I had taken Retrofitter Foundry, I think... But... I'm glad I took the Wasteland, but had I taken Retrofitter, I guess I would have maybe been more inclined to do that. And at the blue, I, I can use it once I have enough mana. I think I'd rather just have the Forest over the Cradle, and I don't think I run the High Tide. Because this, this deck does have four colorless lands is one of the things. So it only has two duels. There's Prismatic Vista and Waterlog Grove. I am glad I took the duels. So this is now... Eight, nine green and four, five, six, seven, eight, nine blue. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. All right, I think I'm gonna run this, and I think I am gonna try the candelabra. Oh, it's just with workshop now is the problem. Yeah, because when I had the cradle dream, that was one thing. Problem is if I cut it and I put in high tide, that also doesn't really help. Maybe I just cut it and put in. Questing Beast, because Questing Beast is just like our random good card. And I can attack them. Or maybe Vendillion Click. Those are also, that's also a reasonable card to put in. You know, I think I'd rather just have Questing Beast in general. And then no Candelabra. I also don't have to play Haywire Might or Hangerback Walker. I mean, maybe actually I don't play Hangerback Walker at this point and I play Vendillion Click. Yeah. Now that I'm not playing Cradle, I, I, I can cut those. All right, this looks a lot better. Let's uh, let's see how this does. Oh, Misha's Workshop is good with Hangerback. It's also kind of good with Kinnon. It's not really good with Channel, I wouldn't say. Hmm. Is it crazy to get Cradle in? I keep going back and forth. Because Trinket Mage... Oh, I'm definitely playing Haywire Might because Trinket Mage for Haywire Might is good. And Haywire Might is just a good card. You know, the other thing Candelabra is good with, let me just sell you on this for one more time, Channel. It lets you turn colorless mana into colored mana. Same with Kinnan. Okay, you know what? I'm back in. And I want to find a way to get Guy's Cradle in there. And maybe that way is to cut... Is there a spell I can cut instead? Especially with crop rotation, just sometimes having access to that seems like it would be just randomly great. Because, like, I have two ways to generate a lot of creatures. With this being kind of like a bad third way. Maybe I just cut a land, yeah. Maybe. Maybe that's where we're at. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine green sources is, is a lot. But I do have a couple early green plays that I would really like to see. Two, six, nine blue. Maybe I can go to eight blue. Because I don't need... Yeah, all right. That sounds reasonable to me. Put a swamp in the sideboard in case I need it. And uh, we'll see We'll see how, how ambitious this ends up being. Let's see how it goes. All right. Welcome to round one where I'm probably going to draw a guy's cradle and... Regret it. Uh, ooh, this hand looks good. Little Crucible Strip action. What this hand wants more than anything else would be a way to add mana. Let's go like a Mox or whatever. Let's go Beseju Go. And I'm just going to cycle Lorien Revealed, I think. 
giver of runes, huh? Okay. Um, trinket mage. Yeah, let's just go Kinan. I kind of feel like if I go Kinan into play strip mine, cast trinket mage. Oh, Greaves. Okay. That's a, that's a thing. Uh, trinket mage. Get Mox. And then play Mox. I'm going to actually pass. I'm not going to play the Haywire Might. The reason I'm not playing Haywire Might is I don't want my opponent, uh, Pete, here to know that I might have a Haywire Might in case like he's playing that to Tinker or something. Oh, to Fairy. Sure, you're going to bounce Kinan. All right. You're going to bounce Kinan. I'm going to strip my other lands. We are not the same. Uh, let's attack Teferi here. All right, Teferi down. Strip that. Crucible. Strip that. And that's probably just going to be game here. I would imagine not a whole lot of enthusiasm to, con to continue this game if you don't have a way to deal with things now. Uh, that's not going to do it. I mean, yeah, you can give it haste. The funny thing about Lightning Greaves is it's not actually a really a combo with Giver because it's Shroud. So Giver can't actually protect the Intrepid Adversary. You might as well attack. Yeah, get in there. Oh, Time Warp. Time Warp is something I'll probably play in a turn or two. Let's go Time Warp. Let's go Kinnan. I'm just gonna play the Haywire Might now and pass the turn. And you can move the boots onto the Gre the Giver, then attack with the adversary. I guess is a plan. What I'm probably gonna do next turn is just cast Time Warp here. Oh, you needed to move the boots off if you wanted to attack with Intrepid Adversary, though. For the same reason I just said. Weird card, huh? It's just been a while since people have played with something that wasn't hexproof, so it's actually a little bizarre. All right, now we're moving it over there, which I think is the right play to make. Land. Time Warp because of the the Mox taps for two mana. Thanks to Kinan. Take my extra turn here. Echo of Eons and Upheaval are both cards I could at some point run out, but I don't really need to right now. Mm. Does Pete have a Force of Will and is deciding whether to Force of Will the Time Warp? Nope. Pete is done. Um, show my team what they've got here. Alright. Mm, do I want Terra Sunder? I kind of do. Okay. Well, I don't know. So Lightning Greaves by itself and Island by itself doesn't scream Tinker. The combination of both kind of makes me feel like there might be a Tinker coming, which means I would want Terra Sunder, but I already do have the Haywire Might, I guess. So I have Restless... Like, if I board in Terra Sunder, I'd board in Restless Cottage. That does make my can't, uh, Arkham's Astrolabe a little worse if I did that. I don't know. Because I would be taking out a Snowland for a Restless Cottage. Let's just fire it off here. Crucible Strip Mine, powerful combo. And, okay, so this hand has turn on Reclaimer, turn two, get a Strip Mine, turn three, uh, Strip Mine plus Loam. I think that's a reasonable hand to keep here. Okay, well, drawing another big expensive card wasn't exactly what I had in mind. But hopefully Pete doesn't have a super fast start. Skull Clan. Plus no creature, or no, oh, Prismatic Ending, eh, that's unfortunate. That kind of takes my whole game plan out of commission. I could cast Loam and Dredge it and just hope to hit. That doesn't seem very strong. Teferi, okay. Okay, action. <laughs> I don't think I'm sacking Waterlog Grove here, because that just sets me back a land drop. That doesn't really seem super productive. Well, he dealt with my one creature, and then the rest of my hand is terrible, so this hand is not going great. That's just going to get skull clamped here. Mm. 
What would be a good draw here? Dryad would actually be a pretty good draw because I'd just get to cast two things. Didn't play a land. Uh oh. Don't really like that. Uh, I guess the Mox is not a bad draw. Let's just keep hitting land drops. Maybe next turn I'll just go land, cast Echo of Yuns if he hasn't done anything. No, he hit a land drop. Disaster. Vesper Lark? Okay, so we're going to clamp it and get back. Sure. Yeah, I mean, this makes Echo of Eons pretty, attempt, pretty appealing. He's got six cards in hand. Most of them are, are uh, spells here. Dang. I wish I could have that in play. I unfortunately can't, and I think I'm still supposed to Echo here. And you get a whole new hand, I get a whole new hand. Oh, days? Sure. That's actually not even bad for me because I can just cast Echo next turn and setting back a land, Pete back a land drop is mostly what I care about. I mean, it's good to know about days, of course, but I'm not saying he shouldn't have dazed it. I'm just saying in terms of outcomes, that really wasn't too bad. Okay, we're, we are pumping the student of warfare at least instead of going straight into Skull Clamp, but now this is like I'm leaving up counter magic. So let's start with Trinket Mage here. Okay. And I think I'm just gonna go Haywire Might to get that Skull Clamp. Let's play the Workshop and use the Workshop to cast the Haywire Might. And then pass the turn here. Look, if he's gonna leave up two mana, not equip Skull Clamp. When I have a flashback card in my graveyard, I just don't have to cast a spell into it. There's no rule that says I have to. Oh, what is this? Othari? Okay. Mm. Honestly, it's still not that bad. What, what I would really like to draw here, I'm going to block here. I'm actually not going to block with Trinket Mage. Exile the Skull Clamp. I think what I'm going to do is use the Waterlog Grove. Let's see. As things currently stand, I could upheaval and then play a land. That's probably good enough that I shouldn't use Waterlog Grove. And I'm just going to draw for my turn. Cast upheaval, floating no mana. And play a land. Uh, oh, Kinan. That doesn't change anything. I guess I attack you for two. I think it's worth upheavaling here. I could also Kinnan, but no, I think upheaval is just better. And then go land, mox, Kinnan, pass the turn, discard a forest. And then next turn I can cast Trinket Mage and cast Astrolabe, and then I just have tons of mana. Meanwhile, Pete just got, basically he spent a lot of time, and I'm not, again, I'm not saying that he made bad plays. I'm just saying the way the game turned out, Pete spent a bunch of time like equipping Skull Clamp and like, you know, plussing Teferi and doing stuff that doesn't really affect the board too much. And or, and then by the time he tapped out for Othari, then an upheaval with no mana acceleration or moxes on his side is going to be pretty good. And all those extra cards he drew doesn't really, don't really matter that much. Like days was was pretty good for me. So next turn, I think Trinket Mage Astrolabe because Astrolabe, remember, with Kinnan in play is a mana source, and then I can cast an Echo with like a ton of mana in play. So yeah, I, I like this. So he's gonna discard five cards here. I'm also still at a very reasonable life total. I also could. No, if I if I trinket mage for hanger back, the workshop isn't gonna tap for enough mana to make it very big at all. So that doesn't seem like a good play. I'm gonna take our turn as soon as Pete's done discarding here, and then I go trinket mage, astrolabe, pass the turn. Next turn I'll have one, two, three, four, five, six mana at my disposal after after playing a land. And then We'll see how that works out. I could also draw Strip Mine here, and then that would just be game. Discard wow, we discarded two two drops. Othari doesn't surprise me. Student, student, and a one drop. Interesting. I wonder what his hand is. Okay. Let's get Astrolabe. 
play it. Draw. No attacks. Sage is not terrible. Still a little worried about a counter spell here, so we'll we'll see if he leaves mana up. Okay, he didn't leave blue mana up. He's just bouncing the kin in. Sure. And I'll block the usher if you want to attack. Alright, wasteland is nice. Let's go. Do I want to echo? I kind of don't this turn. Let's go Wasteland, your Caracas, Kinan, tap for blue, tap for green. Uh, maybe I do echo this turn. Yeah, my hand's pretty bad. I, I'm giving up on Mishra's Workshop, but I don't think that's too bad. All right, let's just echo. Oh, I like this hand. All right. Kinnon's actually just really working out here just as a mana generating uh, engine here. Student of Warfare. Yeah, that's game. Okay. So now I have one, two, three, four, five, six mana. Can't even get dazed. Let's play the strip mine. And I could play Coveted Jewel, but I'd be a mana short. So I think... I just time warp here. And I guess that's it. I don't need to play. I don't play anything else. Take my turn. Draw. I don't. Coveted Jewel seems like a way to potentially give Pete access to a ton of mana. So maybe try to avoid doing that. Let's go. Oh, I can go, look at this. I can go Chrome Host Seed Shark. Strip mine your planes. Add double green. Loam back strip mine. Make a make a shark token. Strip mine your planes. All right. Yeah, that that should be game. <laughs> uh, it's going to be pretty hard for him to get out of this. And uh, yeah, who needs academy, right? Cradle would have been good at a few points this game. Obviously now that I have everything in play, it would be good. But even before then, feels like Cradle wouldn't have been terrible. Astrolabe, really, a cantrip mana rock is pretty nice, given that it's adding two mana with Kinan here. And uh, yeah, this looks pretty good. Let me just show my team that I have indeed won. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Pete looking to see if there's a way to get out of this. Probably just screenshotting, honestly, more more likely than, than that. Like, I don't think, I don't really see much of a way. Like, it would involve something like Solitude Ephemerate, and that's really not going to happen. All right. What do you know? Let's get to round two. All righty. Playing against Echo Bronin Andreas, who's playing Red Green Beats. I'm on the draw here. I mean, this hand's not terrible, but it doesn't really do anything. Like, what are my plays over the first couple turns? And then I have the like, expensive blue cards. Eh, I don't know. I think I can mulligan this. Uh, yeah, I'm going to keep this hand, put a forest back. I can crop rotate into Misha's Workshop, so this hand at least has some decent outs if I get a little more acceleration. Oh, this is actually funny. Candelabra is actually going to be good here. Let's play Candelabra. And then turn two, I can cast Coveted Jewel or Mind Slaver because I can crop rotate for Workshop and then Workshop out one of those things. Oh, or I could just draw Misha's Workshop. That also works. So let's go workshop, X targets, workshop. And I think I just play Coveted Jewel, because that if he plays a haste creature, that ends up being bad for me. But I get to draw three. And I think I'm going to pass and then upkeep. I'm going to crop rotate away the uh, forest for strip mine. Because he didn't play anything on two, so seems like this is going to work out pretty well to hopefully take another turn off of him. I did draw three lands. <laughs> That's not ideal. 
Oh, I guess I didn't need to do an upkeep, but I do want to crop rotate. And I'm actually going to strip mine the forest because I have wasteland in hand for stomping ground. Strip mine forest. And hopefully still has no plays. And then next turn, I can't quite Mindslaver activate, but I can get pretty close to that. I might play the Mindslaver and pass, or we'll see, we'll see. If he doesn't have a play this turn, I get to Wasteland and play Mindslaver, which is pretty nice. No plays, yes, yes, yes. Not lands, please. I do need to stop drawing lands. I have a lot of mana, but I don't have enough to... X is one, done. I don't have enough to just do any, I don't know. I have a lot of mana. I don't have anything to do with it, I guess is what I'm trying to say here. Okay, but that's enough. That was a sick start. Look at that. <laughs> Coming to Jewel, I love it. Wow, okay. I was drawing nothing for a little bit, then I was drawing a battle ball. All right. Against red-green, I kind of feel like Questing Beast might be decent. And Haywire Might looks a lot less good. That also makes me want Cradle less, because I know he's got removal for my creatures. So let's take out Cradle. Let's put it, just put a forest back in. Or actually, I took out an island for it. Um, don't think I want V-click. Yeah, I think this looks good. Well, Candelabra worked out that game. I mean, I was going to crop rotate for the workshop, and that was going to be pretty good. But it also worked out pretty nicely to just do that. Though I, I realized... Uh, no, I could have crop rotated in response to the Covenant Jewel drawing me three cards in case I drew the strip mine. The reason not to do that is if I drew a three drop, I'd probably just cast the three drop. Okay, on the draw here. And all right, I'm not going to mulligan a turn two trinket mage. Probably not cycling Lorien revealed here. We'll see. But given that I've got a bunch of lands to play. It feels fine not to. Black Lotus is pretty good. Turn one chariot. All right, that's going to be pretty tough. I guess Elvish Reclaimer is a play, so that's better than nothing. I need him to not have a ton of follow up here because a 4 4 that spits out a 2 2 every turn is pretty good. But I might be able to somewhat stabilize here if I go like Trinket Mage and start setting stuff up. I don't know. We'll see. Don't think I'm chumping here. And I wonder if Terra Sunder is good. <laughs> Haywire Might, funnily enough, is actually decent there. All right, Devoted Druid, sure. Let's play the Strip Mine. I think it's fine. I, there's a chance I might want to use it next turn. I don't know. Trinket Mage. And I think I have to get the Astrolabe here because I don't really have anything to do. So Astrolabe pass. One reason, I guess getting the Astrolabe or getting the Candelabra could help if I drew Workshop in an artifact. That seems like pretty, uh, pretty thin. I mean, I'm going to lose a lot of games where my opponent's on the play, turn one Lotus a four drop. I will say that. And now he's up to five mana again, so he can just play something else too. It's a Thundermaw Hellkite. Oh, Nissa. Yeah, I'm not going to live long enough to cast uh, upheaval here, unfortunately. Would be nice if I if I left Cradle in and maybe could have like gotten Candelabra, gotten Cradle and tried to get to upheaval that way, but don't think that's very likely. So what are my outs here? I guess it kind of depends how much damage I take this turn. Because if I can draw Time Warp, I could maybe get there. I could also draw Kinnon into Basalt Monolith. I mean, that's obviously a two card combo, but if I do end up getting there. All right, so we're gonna crew the Chariot. I guess I'm gonna double block the Mountain if if it attacks me, which it looks like it's going to. Okay. Make another cat. And let's go block, block. Probably lose my Reclaimer here. 
which was potentially going to be a 3-4 next turn. But I don't really want to take a bunch of damage here. All right, there's Misha's Workshop. Let's go Astrolabe here. And what are we even hoping to draw? I don't know. Let us Candelabra. All right, let's play the Candelabra, I guess, and play an island. Pass 10. So my goal is basically just to survive and hope to draw Time Warp and then hope to draw, I don't even know, something that generates a lot of mana. I'm probably not even gonna survive this turn. Rex Sage, yeah, that's enough. Just killing the Mox is enough that I, I really can't do much. All right, well, getting Lotus on turn one isn't really gonna, I'm not gonna win. Do I want Terra Sunder? No, but I like Questing Beast. Yeah, I think I like this all well enough. I think the Candelabra is still enough. Mm, I don't know, maybe, maybe I do want Cradle. You know what? I'm gonna put in Cradle over Island. I I feel like I feel like we, we could still be Cradle gamers here. This the upside is just so high. <laughs> in before. And yeah, I mean I guess I just ended up putting in one thing. Alright. Well, maybe we'll get a nice little channel draw here too. That could be fun. What is my what is what is my busted channel draw? I guess it's really just like turn two, channel out coveted drool, channel out and then channel out battle ball or something, and that's probably enough to win a lot of those games. I could potentially have like turn on astrolabe, turn two channel, and then I can play like seed shark into something. I don't know. There's a, there's a lot of different permutations here. I could also play turn one kinnon, turn two basalt monolith, uh, win the game. So these are all these are all outs. All right, I'm on the play here, and all right, I'm gonna keep this hand. <laughs> Guy's cradle over island mm, hasn't worked out so well this particular turn, but we'll see how it goes. I would like to draw a land. Oh no. Oh, Utopia Sprawl. I have strip mine and wasteland. You didn't board out Utopia Sprawl. That is daring. Land here would be excellent. All right, so now I can just go strip mine that. And then you go land go, and then I loam back, and then we just have another strip mine loam game. <laughs> well, strip mine's a good one. All right. Playing Guy's Cradle? No problem. No problem. Never cost me a thing. You can, you can pack it up if you don't have a two drop here. And that'll do it. Nice little 2-0. Thank you, Strip Mine. All right, let's go for the 3-0. I'm on the play here. And yeah, I will keep this hand. I'm not thrilled about it, but I think it's keepable. And I don't really want a City of Traders out of Seed Shark. Seed Shark needs a good amount of mana to actually do something. So I'm not playing this on turn two which means I'm probably leading on just island or forest. I guess just forest in case I draw Elvish Reclaimer on turn two, and then I want to strip mine plus Elvish Reclaimer, so that sounds better. Or a reason to lead on island would be if I did want to go City of Traders into Seed Shark, but I kind of want to go turn three Seed Shark, turn four City of Traders, cast Lorien Revealed. Like, I'm not cycling that one either. Let's go forest go. Playing against like a four color reanimator deck, like Grixis Splash Green Reanimator, or maybe five color reanimator. I don't know. I'm probably just gonna use a bunch of strip mines and wastelands and, and just beat <laughs> Dan here with uh, those. That's mostly been what this deck's done, though. That, I did have that workshop candelabra draw that went pretty hard. All right, loam? Any loams? No, there's a wasteland. Um, let's just play my island and say go. No reason to. Let Dan know that Wasteland's coming, though it's kind of a unfortunate that I drew Wasteland this turn, because if I was able to waste that last turn and then strip mine that, oh, it's not no plays, huh? I'm gonna play the Wasteland now because I want to play Seed Shark. Oh, actually, then I can't go Waterlog Grove that. But actually, it might be better just to go City of Traders Might Stone and Weak Stone anyway. Okay, Drew White into Mox Jet. Oh. Gonna play a Leovold here? No. Oath of Druids. Okay. 
That's unfortunate. Um, in that case, let's go City of Traders, cast Mightstone and Weakstone, draw two cards, or I could actually, hold on, I could just kill my Seed Jerk. I didn't really think about that, but yeah, is that better? It kind of feels like it's better. I should have, I guess, attacked first, but whatever. And then pass. And then next turn, I could wasteland the Temple Garden. All right. It just feels like letting letting Dan Oath doesn't seem super productive. All right. Oh, there's a Battle Ball. Funny. At some point, I might play that. I mean, I could play it this turn, but I don't really want to play it into Oath here. Okay. Didn't do anything with the mana, that's fine. Waterlog Grove. Mm, do I want to play Mindslaver? I think I'll just cast Lorien Revealed. Sounds better to me. And then I can cast Mindslaver next turn if I want. Actually, I have a lot of mana. There's a lot of things I could do over the next couple turns. Let's see, draw. Finding Crucible would be great. Oh. Workshop is interesting. So now I can't, I guess I just go workshop, cast Mindslaver, and then pass with Remand up. And then at some point here, I go like end of turn, incubate, and then and then Oath after that or something. What is this? And will I be remanding it? A bitter reunion, I probably wouldn't remand here. And let's see what you discard. And I will remand the reanimation spell. The other thing is, my son of Weakstone is pretty good in this deck. I can activate Slaver and still leave Remand up next turn. The question is, if they discard something big and pass with mana up, I guess I can't make Incubator token end of turn. I think I am going to make the Incubator end of turn because I think once I mine Slaver, I. I just am like okay with Oath happening. I don't know. I don't really have a way to get the Oath off the board. I'm probably going to want to bring in uh, Terra Sunder. Okay, you just discarded a Wrath. Because one of the Oath targets, in, or reanimation targets, whatever, one of the big creatures in Dan's deck is Angel of Despair. If that happens, I can just Oath up Angel. Oh, didn't play a land? All right, well, I am going to... I'm going to flip this thing on and let's go Mind Slaver you. I guess I should have played my land first, whatever. Uh, play Astrolabe, draw, play Reclaimer and attack for five and then take your turn and your hand is Corp stamps through the breach, ley line binding. All right. Uh, I will oath. Milled up a seasoned dungeon here. All right. You take the initiative. That's fine. Put the cards in your graveyard. Uh, any order is fine. All right. Do I want to find you a land? I don't really know that I do. Okay. Ashen Rider, Fiery Confluence, Grave Titan, Inferno Titan, Gristle Brand, Show and Tell. Oh wow. Okay. Here might as well uh, whatever. I don't I don't care. Uh let's let's just screenshot this just so my teammates can see Dan, Dan's deck here. Alright. There we go. Um I don't want to put a land into hand, I don't think. Your hand Dan's hand is this. Let's see. Because it has Blood Crypt already, so let's say no lands. Um, what I think I want to do is go Blood Crypt, pay the life, Bone Shards, additional cost, discard a card, choose Seasoned Dungeoneer, pay a black, discard Woodfall Primus, yeah. In response, cast Corpse Dance to get back Woodfall Primus. 
this resolves, this comes into play, Woodfall Primus blows up Oath of Druids, and then I have Remand for the Through the Breach next turn, this, the Seasoned Engineer dies to the thing, you don't attack with the Woodfall Primus, then it gets exiled thanks to Corpse Dance. And that leaves me in pretty good shape because now I get to attack for eight and then remand. All right, that was a nice little nice little dub. And I don't really even need to do anything else, but I guess I'll just play a Trinket Mage, why not? Pick up a, a Mox, play the Mox, pass the turn. And I don't even know that Emrakul Breach wins the game here. I mean, I'm going to remand it because I'd be a fool not to, but I don't think Emrakul Breach actually would even be good enough. I would just get to attack back for lethal. But nonetheless, remanding it is the safe play. All right. Well, Mindslaver did some good work there. Uh, do I want Vendillion Click? I think I do need Terra Sunder. And I think Vendillion Click is probably decent. Haywire might also be very good. What do I want to cut? Maybe I cut Hangerback Walker. It's just kind of bad against Oath and doesn't interact with any of his creatures. So I think it's just not very good. What do I want to cut for Vendillion Click? I could cut Elvish Reclaimer, but I don't really want to do that. I could cut the Candelabra because that's just my weakest card. Like some, it's not always going to work. Maybe I just do that. Oh, if I'm putting in Terra Sunder, that probably kind of makes me want to put in Restless Cottage over a Forest because some amount of the time I I get black to activate it off of Astrolabe, and I don't think I want to put a Swamp in unless I also want Maelstrom Pulse, but I don't really want to do that. Okay, let's put the cottage in. Hopefully that's not too bad, but I also have Coveted Jewel for black mana. Could come up. All right, on the draw here. Mm. It says Strip Mine plus a bunch of blanks. Is that good enough? Strip Mine, and then if I draw blue... Mm -hmm. I kind of feel like this hand's a mulligan. I don't know. It's... Strip mine plus nothing. This hand, I guess I'll keep this and put channel back. This hand has wasteland plus nothing, but at least if I draw another uh, land, I can play stuff. All right, let's just start on wasteland here. Pass the turn. And now, actually drawing forest was really good here because now I can go forest, mox, Kinnan, and then Kinnan makes the Mox tap for double blue, which means I can cast Vendillion Click. Technically, I cast Time Warp next turn. I'm hoping no Oath here. Oh, that's funny. Had he had Dan drawn an answer to or an Oath, I would have been able to to deal with it with Haywire Might. But all right, let's play the Haywire Might, and then on draw step, I'm gonna V Click, and we are just getting our beatdowns on, is what we're doing. Pretty decent chance that uh, I'm not taking anything, given that Dan went forest forest here, but I want to stop him from making a play if I can. And let's see. <laughs> Man, the wasteland and strip mine really messed Dan up here. Yeah, I mean, I'm not taking anything here. You can just have all of those cards. And then I know he's just going to say go. <laughs> What a sample hand, huh? Um, let's attack. I guess since I have Haywire Might, I guess I don't need the Besaju that badly. So let's just play this. That way I, I can time warp without using City of Traders. Um, and then I guess it's probably fine just to cast Mind Slaver here. Attack. And then now I could have activated Kinnan, but I don't have very many creatures in my deck. And then this way I just have Mind Slaver next turn. Also, he's just dead to my beatdowns. And uh, that'll be a nice clean 3-0. You love to see it. Honestly, just waste strip crucible. So let's just go back. I want to take a look at the deck real quick. First of all, I, I feel vindicated. I think the Candelabra was good enough. I never tapped Cradle for multiple mana, and it almost was a liability in one of the games. Actually, two of the games was my opener. 
So I'm not sure about that, but Candelabra Workshop came, came together big like twice, and that was huge. Never actually cast channel, but Crucible, Loam, with strip of course and then also wasteland having those two that's all it was worth a lot of free wins even just having wasteland and strip mine without recursion against the the five color deck with, with all triumphs was awesome and then uh i never really cast echo i did win a game off upheaval coveted jewel was awesome love the addition of this card this is definitely an r cube now too uh the our, our physical one here and uh yeah overall i like the way this deck played out had a lot of paths to victory and it uh it drew well enough. Had a lot of strip mines in my opening hand. That, that's the way it's done. All right. Thanks for watching. My team is, I think, going to win as a result. We're up quite a bit. And uh, I think I did my part. Got my three wins. Never went infinite, but Kinnan actually just made the mox tap for extra mana or the Astrolabe tap for extra mana. And that was already pretty good. So pretty good deck. This this deck ended up playing out really nicely, even if we had to pass Tolarian Academy. And I'm still tilted about that. <laughs> uh, as always, thanks for watching. We coveted those jewels very nicely. I'll be back tomorrow with another draft, and uh, I'll make sure to see you then.